Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. In some episodes, I'll have guests available to give you even more tips, but in others, the floor is yours. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay. I'm again joined by Inga Truscott. Some of you may remember Inga from early on in episode 29, talking about essential self-care oils. Today and the next episode, we are going to bombard you with essential oil info. Inga is a lovely, lovely person who has immersed herself in the world of essential oils, all things goodness from the earth. And if you wonder why we talk about essential oils, you might recall in episode 37, I spoke of environmental connection. Now, part of environmental connection is using what the earth can provide and not creating a toxic environment for yourself, for your home, your kids, your pets. And Inga, that's really where essential oils comes in, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Magic. Thanks for having me back again too before I move forward and start bombarding with oils. (laughs) Absolute pleasure. Now, I think a lot of people out there might think, you know, essential oils are a little bit woo-woo or, you know, how can they be trusted? And I'm just going to make this statement right now from the outset, and Inga, I think you'll agree with this. Inga and I both use doTERRA. Full transparency, I'm just going to put that right out there. Everything we tell you today will be with our knowledge of doTERRA essential oils. Not all oils are the same. Normally, I don't spruik any brands here, but I am going to tell you this. Yes, Inga and I both love doTERRA oils. But if you are using oils in your home for yourself, for your pets, for your family, you must only use one of two brands. One is doTERRA and the other is Young Living. I'm not going to tell you that Young Living are anything less. They are certainly not. But if you are using oils that are not those two brands, stop using them, throw them out. The essential oils that you get at the El Cheapo shops, Essential oils you get from supposed aromatherapy companies are not usually good quality oils. Now, there are a few exceptions, and really that's up to you to do your due diligence and research on the oils that you choose. But we are talking today about doTERRA oils because we know they can be trusted, they are safe, And certainly from a functional health standpoint, which we'll talk about in the next episode, uh, you really need to make sure that you have good quality oils. Inga, your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, I think everything you said is spot on. And I would love to just reiterate, the reason we know that they're safe is because they're tested. And that's where, you know, I'm only going to speak for doTERRA because I've really looked into the testing process. My understanding is also that Young Living are safe and tested, but I haven't looked into that. So I I prefer not to say something I'm not 100% sure about. But what I do know is when I decided to look at the business of doTERRA, I wanted to make sure that the products I was recommending and using on my own body, using with my family, I wanted to make sure that they were tested. And one thing that we know globally is that there's no essential oil testing governing body so to speak, not anywhere. So really anybody can produce any kind of essential oil, slap a label on it, call it what they want, and the the general public or the consumer is none the wiser. So what doTERRA have created is uh, a testing method. Uh, They go through all of our oils, go through at least seven levels of testing. 
And if they don't make the cut, they do not make the market. And that is super, super important. You've got to remember also, Magic, you know, more than 70% of our oils are sourced locally in their natural habitat. And most of those habitats are Indigenous um, regions across the world, third world country. So, yeah, so there's no governing body to test or organics or what's really in the product. And, yes, you can do a little bit of harm to your body um, if you start increasing your toxic load. And isn't it, aren't we all here to reduce our toxic load? So, yeah. Well said. So let's get straight into it. Today we're talking about essential oils for the household, including your pets. Now, Inga, I absolutely love and adore my pets, as you know. When we're talking about our fur babies, and I know you're a dog person, I'm a cat person, the thing I hear the most from my clients is, what about fleas and ticks? Now, there's different oils that suit different animals, and I've just got a couple of recipes and tips here, and you can jump in and share anything that you want here, Inga. So when I'm looking at dogs, there's a few essential oils that I know are safe with dogs because they'll come across them as wolves in the wild. So when I look at my pets, I always think in their wild state, in the natural state as their ancestors, what would they come across? So for dogs, it's oils like eucalyptus, peppermint, cedarwood, citronella, very woody kind of earthy oils. Citronella, as you know, is a deterrent for most bugs. So the thing with dogs is that the mix needs to be appropriate for their size. So for larger dogs, 30 drops of essential oil with a cup of water, shake it well, and that's going to last you forever. Now, that's if your dog is used to essential oils. If you are just beginning, you start with 10 drops, in the cup of water and slowly build up. Now with all pets, it's really important that they don't ingest much of the oils, if any, particularly with cats, which I'll get onto in a moment. But with dogs, you can spray under the base of the tail, you can spray the back of the ears, you can spray the back of the neck, anywhere where you would have put toxic flea treatment that you don't want them to lick up, that's where you spray your oils. Inga, what's your take on dogs and fleas? Yeah, I think you were spot on with the with the dosage. I'm a fur mum. I've got two dogs and I'm a carer to two extras now as my daughter's just added a, a new one to the family. Um, and we've just got to look at their size. And actually, I wanted to just mention eucalyptus is an oil that comes up in conversation quite a lot. So I use resources and I, I follow resources that I know Uh, are using doTERRA as well. I think that's important too. You can actually do a bit of Googling and you could find that perhaps eucalyptus might suggest it's not safe for dogs. However, in the resources that I use with doTERRA, eucalyptus is okay to use. So once again, we've got to remember that all oils ain't oils, right? But there is a great homemade flea flea and tick collar you can make. And I know you're going to be really interested in this because of the quantities um, and how you know, and also the oils as well. So they have five drops of eucalyptus, five drops of geranium, five drops of thyme, five drops of lemongrass, and then we have a blend called Terra Arma. And you can put some of that in. Now you want to think about distilled water as well. Um, and I know you're you're the water queen. You know so much about water magic, so I won't even cross paths there. But distilled water is obviously really important. And for dogs weighing, you know, four months or weighing less than 15 or so, it says pounds. About seven kilos. There you go. Thank you. I was going to say five, but I knew that it wasn't going to be quite enough. Um, It's just two drops of all of those. So you can see how important those dosages are. Yeah. And you can just put that onto the dog's collar, onto the flea collar, and that will be really, really helpful as well. You can do shampoos. There's so much you can do to never really have to go down that toxic road for your for your pets. Um, and my pets love it. I mean, I've got the diffuser going behind me. I know, I know you can't see that, but I've got two very sleepy dogs right at my feet with no issues whatsoever with oils diffusing in our home 
all night and all during the day as well. So I think it's just really important to know where you're getting your information from. I use a book called Spoil Your Pet, um, obviously a little pun on the oil in there. And I highly recommend it for your listeners who already are using oils or for those that want to start using oils and just want to know that they've got a really safe resource for their little fur babies, Spoil Your Pet is great. And for those on Facebook, um, it's a fabulous group called um, The Essential Vet, actually, and, um, and she has amazing stuff as well, all really safe oils too. Wonderful. Now let's talk about cats. Cats are a little bit more sensitive to oils, so it's really important whatever you use around your cats that you have, like if you're diffusing, an open window. Allow some of the oils to escape the room because they can be very sensitive, particularly if they are a purebred cat because their DNA, their genetic makeup has been changed. Now with cats, you must use a carrier oil. So almond oil or fractionated coconut oil are perfectly safe for your cats. And particularly the coconut oil is quite healthy for them as well. Yeah, I love to, you know, maybe just put a drop or two in my hand and then have the carrier oil, rub my hands together, and then maybe just pet their belly, you know, like just pat through their tummy. And particularly for anxiety, we use frankincense, we use, and we use Balance, which is a doTERRA blend that has frankincense and hoe wood and really grounding oils. Um, I do have a barker. One of my dogs is a barker. And I don't know what he gets up to when I'm not home. But I assume if he's if he's in an agitated state, which can happen because there's a rescue, you know, he can get quite barky. So I do have my diffuser going when I'm not home as well for them and the telly. <laughs> you never know what they might like to watch. Um, but I also make sure that I've given both of their bellies a good rub. And if they go to the groomer, a good rub with frankincense, which is something to keep them calm. Lavender is another really good one as well. Um, you know what, apart from diffusing oils around our cat, we do have a cat. I've never really specifically chosen any particular protocols for her because she's just going to live forever. I don't, I don't want to fix what's not broken. <laughs> so with cats, there's a couple of things that I like to do. I have two elderly cats, uh, one who is here in palliative care, has been for three years because he doesn't take any medications, I use essential oils on him, give him good food and lots of love. So he's absolutely fine. And what I like to do with cats is I get five drops of essential oil, I mix it with a teaspoon of usually fractionated coconut oil or even MCT oil. And I mix that in my hand. As you said, you know, rub it through the fur, that kind of thing. That's what I do for the cats. Now, I avoid the eyes, the mouth, and of course, their private parts. I rub it on their legs, the back of their neck, behind their ears. And the oils that I like to use, you mentioned lemongrass. I use that a lot. Lemongrass is death to fleas, I must tell you. The fleas absolutely hate it. So I use cedarwood, lemongrass, and rosemary. Yes, I use frankincense sometimes. And I really make sure, as I said with the dogs, that I think if you were a wild panther, what would you be coming across? They'd be coming across woods. They'd be coming across herbs. They'd be coming across grasses. So cedarwood, lemongrass, rosemary, all perfectly fine for cats. Now, there are a couple of things that I avoid for the cats, and that is the citrus oils. In the wild, as a panther or a tiger, they're not going to grab a lemon or an orange because it's quite a pungent, acidic kind of smell. If they bite into the peel, they'll let it go. So I'm not going to use citrus oils on my cats. I will, as I said, go for the earthier oils. Balance, yes, absolutely perfect. I've got that going in the house all the time on diffuser. It's my perfume. I use a, a balance or grounding blend roll-on. And I know if they lick me, it's okay because it's all stuff they're going to come across. Yeah, actually, it's really interesting on the citrus ones. Um, my girlfriend has a puppy and she's been putting a bit of lemon myrtle um, in a little spray bottle and spraying it. So she's out in New South Wales and you can get these snakes 
doing it heaps up there. I suppose you can get them everywhere, probably where you are too. And, and you get everything else there. I can't imagine why you wouldn't get snakes magic. Um, but she just sprays lemon myrtle around the yard where she doesn't want her puppy to go and start creating a little hole or, you know, getting busy there. And it works an absolute treat. So they just, they're just not interested in those really pungent citrus oils, like you said, those strong scents. Now, doTERRA's um, Terra Armour Inga is perfectly safe around the cats as well. Yeah. It's death to mozzies. So, folks, if you don't want mozzies in the house, get some Terra Armour from doTERRA and just rub it around the doorways, around the window ledges. Mozzies really will try not to come in. Uh, I remember going to Bali for some health treatment oh, five or six years ago now and the only two oils I took were blends. One was Terra Armour and the other was Purify. So if you do get bitten, you use Purify, but you cannot use Purify on cats because it does have quite a citrus base to it. Yeah, another really good oil for cats and dogs is a blend and it's called Digest Zen. It's doTERRA's digestive blend um, and it's also safe for cats and dogs. It's got oils like anise, it's got ginger, peppermint, caraway, coriander, fennel, and it has tarragon. Some of these oils are available as singles with doTERRA and some are limited, but it's nice to be able to get them in the blend and then you get all their, you know, their, their plant goodness, their magic that they their magic that they share with them. But, again, one drop is really all you're going to need for dogs and cats for constipation or, you know, if they've got the runs or if they're just really feeling poorly. Uh, one drop rubbed into their belly, and I think you'll see great results. We've seen great results, certainly with our Japanese Spitz, um, who had some digestive issues when we changed her diet. And um, consistency is key. If you're just going to take that one drop and think, now I'm waiting for my miracle, you probably are waiting for a miracle. But, you know, maybe two or, in the same day, two or three dosages or, or packs, it's nice to pop the babies anyway. And then you'll really start to see some results. But like everything, particularly in the natural world, consistency is going to be key and that's, that's no different with oils. Exactly. Now, if your pet is not handleable, that's a new word I just made up, <laughs> if your pet does not like being um, patted or cuddled, as some rescues can be, really good tip is to use these oils on their bedding. So rub it onto your hands then wipe your hands on the bedding so they'll still get the goodness of the oils they'll still absorb some of it it may take longer but then you are not stressing out a rescued animal that has already got trauma now when it comes to birds some people have birds in the house I am not a fan of that myself because I like to see them flying around but if you do have birds particularly parrots you can diffuse oils near your parrots. It's actually quite good for their skin. So parrots in the wild would have an opportunity to fly towards humidity to help heal their skin if they're feeling unwell. When you have a parrot in the home, it can't do that. And we have heating and air conditioning, which can dry out birds very quickly. So putting three to four drops of a good essential oil in your diffuser is absolutely perfect for your birds. It won't harm them. There are three really good oils for birds, being geranium, lavender and peppermint. Why? Because they will find those in the wild. Mm, yeah, I don't know much about birds, but it made me think I've, I've actually spoken with people who have been concerned about the dogs and like it's fine and so they get their head around that, but then they're like, but what about my indoor plants? <laughs> and I'm like... They're going to be fine too. I, I mean, we we like I said, I have so many indoor plants right through the house, and I have had absolutely no issues with them as well. But the birds, I'm a bit like you, Magic. I like to see them flying around. Now we've covered the pets off. The next thing essential oils are fantastic for Inga is cleaning, and I know you have quite a few recipes, but the oils I really love for cleaning are lavender, lemon, obviously tea tree. And, of course, I use that with combination of bicarb and white vinegar. My toilet cleaner is tea tree. It's about 10 drops of tea tree, some baking soda, some white vinegar, and I keep 
everything in glass. It's really important how you store your oils, isn't it, Inga? It is. Um, particularly citrus oils like to live in the fridge if you're in a, in a particularly hot climate or you just don't get through them fast enough. Again, we only go by our, you know, our own experience. Mine has, I don't have a citrus oil last long enough to have to worry about it living in the fridge. <laughs> But I do, uh, I do make a note to always close my blinds before the sun shines in on. I have my oils, you know, displayed on a wall. So before the sun kind of shines in, not only because um, the sunlight can reduce the potency, but also it also can uh, evaporate the oils. So I don't want my oils evaporating and I don't want that potency being reduced. So same thing if you have, like my husband keeps a bottle of peppermint oil in his console and I know he just sometimes opens it up and then has a whiff and then puts it back. And I'm always putting it into the actual console of the car rather than just sitting there in that heat. Um, we wouldn't want to make anything up that's going on our body or uh, that we're going to ingest in uh, with citrus oils that hasn't that's been in plastic because our oils are super pure and potent. That's why less is always more. And they can break down any plastic that they're stored in. That's citrus oils. Um, I just do it across the board because it's easier explaining to the family. I just say <laughs> no oils in plastic. Um, but, yeah, glass or stainless for drinking, but definitely anything you can put on your body or in your body, don't store in plastic. And do you have another alternative to my toilet cleaner? Some people I might not be fans of tea tree. I, I can get you one. I've got a great uh, floor cleaner that we've been hanging out with lately, actually, which is really, really good. Um, it's, you know, you, you can go to uh, wherever your listeners are. I know they're all over the place, but um, there's a company called Blant, C-L-A-N-D-T-S possibly, and buy your, your dry goods in bulk. And if you just had, you know, some citric acid and some white vinegar and some bicarb soda and all of the bits and pieces ready to go, stored, ready to go, you'll never spend a dime at, uh, you know, the, the chains and the big supermarkets because you can make your own things for just a couple of dollars. We've been using on the floor lately, um, and you can do this on hardwood as well, super safe, white vinegar with peppermint and wild orange. Super easy. Who can't get wild? Or who can't get white vinegar, wild orange, and peppermint? So, uh, super, super easy. I'm going to find you another toilet cleaner. Um, but we're a little bit. I've been a little bit lazy lately, and so DoTerra also have a a cleaning co concentrate. And then it's got the On Guard blend in it, which is our protective blend. The fabulous story around why they choose those oils. But I tend to use that for everything at the moment, I have to say, other than the things that are, you know, like, like that, like the floor cleaner, pop it in the mop bucket. Go for it. Okay, so this is a really fun um, toilet cleaner. It's actually a fizz, so you can make little fizz tablets. And really all you need is, I'll give you the exact ingredients, maybe someone wants to go and have a play. Um, you need 225 grams of bicarb. You need 75 grams of citric acid. 25 uh, drops of grapefruit essential oil with doTERRA. It tastes amazing. Anyone who's collecting oils or getting a little bit of a collection together, you're going to want to add grapefruit. It's also fabulous for your metabolism. Step side note, but what we love about our oils is, is they don't just have one purpose. You know, we look at our oils and think, I could do about 30 things with that oil. So it's really, really nice to have a bit of a collection. Um, so you've got your grapefruit and then you're going to have 25 drops of lime, and if you want to get fancy, you can even grate a little bit up of uh, fresh lime into it. And, yes, and then you just put it all together. You've got to add it really slowly. You can put it into some ice cube trays, and then you get these cute little blocks. Um, the doTERRA DIY blog has in, such a library, free content for everybody to grab DIY recipes as well. Fantastic. Now I've got an all-purpose spray that I like to use and that is the On Guard Protective Blend. So that is antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal and I like to use a tiny bit of Bronner's Castile soap, so about half a teaspoon of that and some white vinegar and I shake it up and I spray all my surfaces with that. Now Castile soap is made from a hemp plant it is non-toxic, 
it has like 105 uses, I think, on the bottle it says. And we use it for everything. So if I need to, going back to the pets quickly, if I need to wash them, I will use a tiny bit of Castile soap on the pets. But this all-purpose spray, white vinegar, on guard, protective blend, and a tiny bit of Castile soap. Yeah, and then you distilled the water, right? Tap up to the top? Yep, just a tiny bit. Uh, I actually don't fill the bottle with that because I like to make sure that I get everything I can out of the bottle. What I find is if you use too much water, that it can dilute too much and stick to the edge of the bottle. Uh, so what I do is I have a bottle of water and I spray it a second time. And that way I get all the residue of the cleaner off. I know it's perfectly safe because my cats live on my benches and they walk on my floors and they go everywhere because we just live here. They own the house. Um, so I actually do two passes through cleaning, one with my concentrate and then one with some distilled water. Yeah, fantastic. I know um, mould is a really easy one to attack as well. And we use tea tree and water and we pop it in a spray bottle, um, sorry, tea tree water and maybe, again, some white vinegar. Um, or if you really have a bit of an issue, an issue area, a mouldy area, you could take the water out completely and just go with that white vinegar and tea tree. Um, and it works a treat and it's totally non-toxic. Tea tree is one of those ones I, I want to just give you a bit of praise there, Magic, when you said at the beginning of this podcast, if you've got oils in your house that you no, are not tested or not safe, throw them away. And tea tree is a big one because you will see that in camping stores and woolies and everywhere else. It's loaded with shelf life extenders and all sorts of things. Um, and once again, doing more harm than good. And tea tree is one that, you know, I know I use tea tree in the shower because it's an energetic cleanser as well as trying not to do all that woo-woo stuff. But it is an energetic cleanser. So I like to kind of start my day off with that. But I also know that a couple of drops of tea tree in the corner of my shower while I'm standing under it helps me, but also keeps mould at bay as well. And that's just a couple of drops. Put it in the corner so you don't slip on it. It's nice and safe. Um, super, super easy as well. So there's just so many different, um, you know, ways that we can use our oils. And you've also got to remember that, you know, your grandma and her grandma and their grandma, they didn't have all these fancy bits and pieces. This is what they use. This is exactly they went to the garden, you know. So um, it's nice to get back to our roots and sort of trace the lines of our ancestors and, and go home. It's like coming home, isn't it? Very true. Now, there's two things I have to interject with here. One being mould. If you have mould spores in the home, so people are getting sick, skin irritations, things like that, you suspect mould, but you can't see it, diffuse a mix of thyme, rosemary, clary sage and peppermint. The combination of those four oils will actually deplete the mould spores from the air. It will smell really earthy and great and fresh in the home, but you know that those spores can no longer spread with that combination going. Now, I speak from experience. We lived in a home full of mould. We were getting sick, colds and flus all the time, couldn't work out why. Went away for a week, actually, Inga, that week that I went to um, base camp up in Queensland, came back and I could smell the mould. So when you're living in a home, you get used to it, you can't smell it. When you leave, you come back, it's going to hit you as soon as you open the door. Get that mix of oils going, diffusing through the house, and that will kill the spores or at least stop them from spreading so you can tackle the problem. I would add clove for mould, for, for mould spores for sure. You know, mould is a big, big deal, especially because you can't see it when it's causing the most damage. And, you, you know, you've got to remember that. It's there just because, just because you can't see it, it's there. So I love that blend. <laughs> it's a good one, isn't it? Now, we were also talking about tea tree. And, Inga, you had recently a little competition going on your Facebook group. And I mentioned that I have a different first aid kit in my car. We do wildlife rescue. And one of the essential items that I have in my first aid kit for the wildlife is tea tree. 
So when I'm doing a rescue, if I find that an animal is very stressed and I need to bring the, the tone down for that animal, I'll actually put a little bit of tea tree on my hands. And so I've got tea tree on my hands and I've got my rescue gloves on. And the tea tree just slowly permeates through the gloves as my hands heat and it actually calms the animal down. Why? Because I live in Australia and there's tea tree bushes throughout the bush. And what will an animal do if it injures itself? It will find a tea tree if it can and break open the leaves and rub the oils on themselves. So I emulate that with my essential oils in my first aid kit for wildlife. Oh, that's awesome. Well, emotionally, tea tree is known to take you from unsure to calm and collected. So you bang on. It's got so many, it's also great for cuts and wounds as well. So if you're in, it's definitely one having that first aid kit for sure. Definitely. Now, there's a lot of uses we could go on forever about essential oils in the home. Inga, what would be your top 10 oils to have in the house? Yep, absolutely. That's an easy one. <laughs> I would have oregano, which is, is a powerful, powerful oil. I think my first bottle of oregano, and I used it often enough, lasted 12 months. Like it's, it just goes so far. I would have tea tree. I would have lemon, frankincense, on guard, that protective blend we talked about earlier, lavender, peppermint, digest then. Everyone needs a good digestive blend. Um, easy air, which is fabulous, obviously a respiratory blend, but great for anxiety, um, cleaning the air, that sort of thing if you've been painting or whatever whatever might be happening. And then, of course, we have another oil blend called Ice Blue, which is absolutely my go-to for all things pain, um, whether it's period pains, whether it's back pain, whether it's joint pain, whether it's migraines, anything pain-related. Um, yeah, ice blue is the way to go. And just those 10 oils have 150 different uses at least that I've got documented. So that is always my go-to my go -to starter oils. And they're the ones that I literally just top up. I, I always have those oils in the house. Even if I'm adding a geranium to the collection or something else, I always make sure I have those 10. Now, just on those oils, Inga, thanks for sharing them. I will just give a little bit of a warning on ice blue. And in the next episode, we're going to be talking about oils for health, particularly relating to functional health. Ice blue is one that, depending on which immune type you are, may not be perfect for you. But it is essential to have in the home. It is great for aches and pains and strains. But there's a little bit of a disclaimer there. So we'll talk a little bit more in depth about that in episode 60. But for now, let's continue with essential oils around the home. We spoke before about pest control and that the Terra Armour, I think it used to be called Terra Shield, and, you know, a lot of the citronellas, things like that, are really good for pests. And I've found a list of things, uh, some through my own experience and some through some research for different bugs. Now, recently, Inga will probably laugh, but I had an ant invasion in my last home and I was using cinnamon bark and they got used to that very quickly. I used clove and they got used to that very quickly. And what I found, the good old most basic oils of all fixed the problem and they were peppermint and spearmint oh yeah well peppermint's great but quite often we'll just have like one of the bottles a peppermint doTERRA bottle and you can switch over the top and I'll put a, a little spray nozzle directly into it and just spray it onto the ants because and they you know and they can be pretty full-on I had an ant in station in my printer on my desk yeah and um, I was just noticing it anyway. I took them out, shook them out, did whatever. I put a little bit of peppermint oil in back into where I found them. I just put it along the, the line of the printer where the paper comes out, and I haven't had an issue ever again. So pretty cool. And of course, it's a nice, lively oil, right? So it's sitting next to me, <laughs> keeping the ants at bay and keeping me awake. Bonus. Totally. And then the list that I'm going to tell you now 
peppermint is going to keep popping up. So for ants, peppermint and spearmint. For aphids in your garden, cedarwood, hyssop, peppermint and spearmint. For beetles, peppermint and thyme. For caterpillars, spearmint and peppermint. For different types of worms and things like that, not the good earthworms, thyme and sage. There's a different one. For fleas, we've spoken about lemongrass. We've also got peppermint, spearmint and lavender. For flies, we've got lavender, peppermint, rosemary and sage. For gnats, if you have those, patchouli and spearmint. For lice, if you have little kids, listen up. Cedarwood, peppermint and spearmint. For mozzies, if you don't have a, a good blend, then just lavender and lemongrass should be enough to keep some of the mozzies away. For moths, we've got cedarwood, hyssop, lavender, peppermint and spearmint. For slugs, cedarwood, hyssop and pine. For snails, cedarwood, pine and patchouli. Now, with slugs and snails, if you have veggie planters, you mix these oils and you rub it around the edge of the planters. So that will stop them coming in and taking out your plants. For snails, you've got cedarwood, pine, patchouli. For spiders, peppermint and spearmint. Again, spiders will find cracks and crevices around doors and windows, uh, your weep holes in the side of your house. That is where you put your peppermint oil. For ticks, you want lavender, lemongrass, sage and thyme. And you can see how many times peppermint comes up there. Inga, what else have you got for bugs? Um, I think you've covered so many of the bugs that I've seen anyway, but I was also just having a look at the simplicity of inside the house as well, like with your fabric softeners and things like that. And something that we've been doing quite a bit lately is just keeping one massive, massive, massive big container of Epsom salt and just literally pouring the whole, leaving the whole bottle, taking the lid off, sitting it in upside down, all the oil come out and that one bottle of you know, lavender oil or something like that is all you're going to need in like two kilos, three kilos. And then another one we've been doing a lot of lately is the fabric softener. We always do the fabric softener, uh, white vinegar and any oil you want, but the citrus oils are really nice. Lemon eucalyptus is great because it does keep the bed bugs away and things like that. You can put it over your mattress to keep the bed bugs away a little spray bottle when you're changing your sheets and it should keep things at bay as well so I think there's just so many different applications for using essential oils that the value starts to really represent itself again when we're only talking with doTERRA one or two drops unless you're making a large quantity yeah, I'm really keen to try some of those garden bed ones you spoke about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good. I've been trialling them with my new veggie gardens and working a treat and then just some crushed eggshells inside the garden bed. So if anyone does sneak across the peppermint and spearmint line, they yeah. will not survive the eggshells. I do have a cockroach repellent, but it doesn't have oils in it. But I reckon if you added peppermint oil to it, it would work a treat. And it's just borax bicarb and epsom salts and i'd be adding some peppermint oil to that as well so you know it, you just start to be it starts to be so clear how quickly and easily we can reduce our toxic load on ourselves on our pets inside and outside the home pretty cool stuff hey totally now if you happen to have wasps near your home a bottle of peppermint oil will be your best friend again you just put it in some water in a spray bottle and you spray it around the nest being very careful that you don't get stung but that will actually keep most of the wasps in the nest until you can get someone to come and remove them for you so that will actually save you a lot of hassle there mm. and you know you can use lemon oil for stain remover as well like on the on whites and things like that you just put a cut you can just put a couple of drops rub it together maybe pop it in the sunshine for a couple of minutes and then wash it again really quickly i've seen the darkest makeup stains come out of collars the darkest like where nothing else would work but a bit of lemon essential oil works a treat that's so pretty cool fantastic now i spoke about my wildlife first aid kit and we all need a people first aid kit you know, you should have one in every home 
quite accessible. And alongside that, you need your essential oil first aid kit. Some oils that you should have, of course, are the protective blend, the On Guard. You need to have your Terra Shield, Owie Spray, which you're going to tell us about in a moment, Inga. You need to have some Correct X, which Inga will also tell us about. Past Tense, which is good for headaches and cramps. You need to have your Ice Blue as well and Digest Sin and your Easy Air. So they're doTERRA mixes. As I said at the start of this podcast, we're talking doTERRA because we use doTERRA. Young Living have the equivalent of all of these. So speak to your Young Living representative to get those. I cannot tell you from the top of my head what they are. But back to our first aid kit. Mm. These blends are a must-have. What can you tell us about Correctex? Oh, correct X is incredible. So it's a balm. It's got your halicrism, sandalwood, frankincense, tea tree, and there I think it's lavender, if I can say that already. Um, it's good for everything. It's just in a little tube, cuts, burns, scars, grazes, chapped lips, dry cuticles, dry heels, anything like that. And it's just honestly you can put it straight onto the wound, straight in the wound if, you, if you've even got an open wound. And you will, it doesn't sting at all. It just it just heals. I've seen incredible healing with correct decks. Um, Helichrysum is probably one of the more pricier oils, but it's definitely a worthwhile investment. Um, again, if you, we call it liquid stitches here in doTERRA land. And if you have an open wound and it is literally open and bleeding, you can pour helichrysum straight into that wound. It does not hurt, but it will stop the bleeding. And it, the healing is is so much faster so really really cool um i like to look at muscle soothe blends sunburn relief so great sunburn relief unfortunately where we are we're coming to the close of our summer but where you might be it could be a different time of year so very very simple sunburn relief or even a burn relief from cooking for example is simply going to be 10 drops of lavender and five drops of helichrysum and then two teaspoons of your carrier oil. Whatever carrier oil you choose, I'm I'm sort of siding with, with magic on this one. I love fractionated coconut oil and I love coconut oil because it is antibacterial. So it's great for these types of things. If I was, if we're talking skincare, which we're not today, then I might look at a few different other carrier oils to suggest, but right on track with anything that's antibacterial, what we're talking about today. Another really good addition to your first aid kit is the Achy Ear Blend. And that's a really simple one again. And that's six drops of your tea tree and then three drops of basil. I love basil oil. It's another really strong oil. And two drops of your carrier oil. Once again, always avoiding your ears, eyes, bits and pits. But you can definitely roll that rollerball blend or you can put it in a little bowl and just massage around your ears but just not inside. Um, Incredible, incredible results. Maybe 12 to 24 hours, any sign of an ear infection is typically likely to be gone completely. Um, Now, Inga, you mentioned liquid stitches. I don't always have helichrysum at home. As you said, it is quite a pricey oil. So it's not something that I'm regularly buying. But lavender is perfect for this. If you have cut yourself, clean the wound, put some lavender straight on the wound, and within hours you will see the healing beginning. I'm always out in the garden getting cuts and scrapes. As I said, I may not have helichrysum at the time, but I do always have lavender. Yeah, brilliant. So we've got the owie spray or the ouchie spray. Um, I've actually got mine right here in my hand as I'm putting together some oils to go away for a little while. And that is that always comes with me. Um, inside our owie spray, we put three drops of lavender, three drops of frankincense, three drops of tea tree, and I add as well three drops of helichrysum. Now, again, as Magic said, it is one of those pricier oils. So if you haven't got it, just do it without, make it without. Don't not do it because you haven't got one particular oil. Just make do with what you've got. You'll still see great results, um, you know, and then you can put it on your little wish list. Totally. 
And it is important to know that, you know, we've said this a few times already today, that you will find so many uses for these oils. Now, something that you can take with you everywhere you go, and I do, is hand soap. And I don't use hand soap. When I go out, I take my own and I have it in the home. And that is purely some Bronner's Castile soap, unscented, very plain. It is five drops of On Guard Protective Blend. It is five drops of rosemary, five drops of oregano. Why? Because they're quite antibacterial and antiviral. And then depending on the mood I'm in, I will put some other oils, again, five drops. So I really like the women's blend for my bathroom, Whisper for my kids' bathroom. They're both boys. So I will get some really masculine oils. They love the citruses. They love the woody oil. So I'll use the Douglas fir for them as well. I will add jojoba oil, which is an Australian product. I make sure it's pure. It's really great for the skin. In my bathroom, I'll also use rosehip oil, very high in vitamin C. And then I mix all those with a little bit of vitamin E oil and then just top it up with some distilled water. And that is your hand soap anywhere you go. Safe to use on your skin, on your hair, safe to use on your clothes. If you're in a hotel room, you can actually, you know, wash your clothes in that. Obviously, you distill it a little bit more because of the oils but something that you can take everywhere you go. And I have this mixed up in my car, in my handbag, my bathrooms, my kitchen, pretty much everywhere. Quite cheap, but very, very healthy and good for the environment. Remember we were talking about environmental connection. Just remember every product you wash down a sink affects the environment. This is perfectly safe. Yeah, definitely. I didn't want to finish this without mentioning the bug bite soother because we talked about all of the things, how to get rid of the bugs, but just in case one of those guys happens to creep through um, your protective clothing, whatever it might be, this is a fantastic little blend. It is one of those ones that, you know, we kind of have in, we've made in various different 10 mil rollables at times and I find them popping up everywhere. And that is simply four drops of lavender, four drops of peppermint, four drops of helichrysum, and then two drops of your carrier oil. So if you do get that bite, you can put that onto it and it is calming. Think of lavender as being, it's calming, right? You think of a cup of lavender, a lavender bath, it's soothing and calming. Everything about lavender says calming. It's calming inside for your anxiety, for your nerves, for whatever might be going on, but it's also calming externally as well for, uh, you know, your skin and your if you've got inflamed acne or something like that you can put um, lavender on your face as well but it's great for calming things down perfect now Inga we've probably bombarded these lovely listeners yeah, for so much about our homes and pets would you please join me again in the next episode to talk about health love to I would absolutely love to I feel like we're just chatting so it's just so great that you know what we what we've got to share hopefully lands because it's just so cool <laughs> it is now listeners when you log in to download this podcast, you may also be able to see the transcription of the podcast for all these recipes. If you cannot find it, visit www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's holistic with a W. And the transcription will be up there for you with all these recipes, all these tips, so you won't miss out on any goodness. If you do want to get some good quality oils just visit mydoterra.com slash holistic natural health that's holistic with a w and you can get some good quality doTERRA oils there while you're on the website on the holistic natural health.com.au website if you do want a young living representative to get in touch with you just send through a contact form and I will send one of my trusted sources to you. And that way, you know, in all fairness, like we said at the start of this podcast, there are two oils that are safe to use. And I don't mind which one you use as long as it is not from your $2 bargain shop and you're trying to use that in your home. 
So for now, listeners, go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at A Magical Life Podcast or at Holistic Natural Health Australia. That's holistic with a W. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more.